Have you ever had a moment where you've known what the right thing to do is, but you've ended up doing the complete opposite anyway? While some of you may be under the illusion that I'm a responsible and mature guy, younger Josh Hull wasn't always the most sensible or trustworthy. When I was in year five, our school went on an excursion to a bike riding education place. Maybe you've been to it before, but the point of it all was to get everyone thinking about bike awareness and safety. And one of us had to volunteer to be the lollipop man for the first part of the day so that we could practice with bike riders stopping and letting pedestrians cross. And so I was jumping up, arm almost out of its socket, pick me. So picture it, 10 year old Josh Hull, uh, this raincoat style, lollipop man, uniform, dorky hat, the miniature stop sign, and I had the authority to make bikers stop and go to let pedestrians cross and make them stay. And as you may have already guessed, I was a little bit mischievous as a kid, um, and instead of doing the proper thing, I would just walk out in front of bike riders when no one was crossing and make them sit there, frustrated until they tried to just go around me. At which point I just kept running in front of them with my little sign. I even ran in front of one guy riding who was riding quite fast and he ended up falling off his bike. <laughs> Thankfully it was uh, mainly on grass. Fun times. And maybe you've seen this in your life too. Maybe you've seen it in funny and ridiculous ways like me. But maybe it's been a little more troubling and deep and serious. Like, you know, it's not right to bully or tease someone, but everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is piling on this one person. And it's just banter, right? But it spills over to so much more. We do things we know we shouldn't do all the time. We often go against what we stand for or believe in. And I wonder if we ever ask ourselves, does God even care about whether I know right from wrong and do the wrong thing anyway? Do you ever wonder to yourself, do I ignore God and what he has to say, even if I believe he is true and I call myself a Christian? Well, tonight I want to show us all from the Bible that being a follower of Jesus means that not only do our thoughts and beliefs change, but the way we behave and the way we act changes too, because our identity has changed in Jesus. So let's turn to tonight's passage, James chapter 1, starting at verse 19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When you read these words, your mind can't help but jump to the many, many instances where you've done the exact opposite of what James says to do here, right? How easy is it for us to get annoyed or angry or frustrated with people in our lives? Our teachers who seem to always change the rules or on us or don't give us the marks we deserve. Our friends who one minute you're supporting and defending them, but in the next when you need their help, aren't around. How about our siblings or even worse, our parents? James gives us a jarring challenge. Living as people who follow Jesus, we should be willing to listen before we speak, to hear out others before we get mad or angry or accuse them. And even when the circumstances get tough, slow to become angry. I wonder if you, like me, are reading this and thinking, that's so unnatural. And James gives us the reason for it, doesn't he, in verse 20. When we are mad, when we are angry, it doesn't line up with what God wants from all of us, especially his people. It's not what God's people, followers and believers of Jesus, do. What an extraordinary challenge. It seems impossible, especially in COVID times when you're stuck at home with your siblings and parents 24-7. No escape, no room, no space, no air. James goes on in verse 21. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. What's a part of your life that you struggle to honor God and live for Jesus? What's something in your life that you know you shouldn't be doing, but do it anyway? James says that our anger doesn't match what God wants us to do, who God wants us to be like. And so James calls us to respond by getting rid of the habits that we have, which we know are wrong and evil. What's a habit that you've picked up during COVID that you know doesn't sit right with being a follower 
of Jesus. Now, at this point, you may ask, so is being a Christian, following Jesus, is that about keeping rules and being a good person, you know, being moral? Well, as we read at the end of verse 21, it's at God's word, the Bible, and the truth about what Jesus has done for us that saves us. Because you see, when God created the world, things were good. However, humans, we rejected God and his rule as the king of the universe because God made everything, he owns everything, and we decided, actually, I want to wear the crown on my own head. I don't want God to be part of my life. I want to rule my own life and live the way that I want to live. And that's what the Bible calls sin. And the consequence of that is that not only do we live in a broken world where things don't go as they should, but actually we're separated from God, not just now, but being separated for an eternity. Not just dying a physical death, but also spiritually dying, being away from God for that for an eternity. However, God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to enter our world to live the life that you and I never could. He lived completely submitting every aspect of his life to God the Father. So much so he died for us. He died for you and I so that we could have a relationship restored with God. How amazing is that truth? How amazing is that love? And that means you and I, we can't earn this this thing called grace, this free, totally undeserved gift. Jesus has paid for your sin if you believe and trust and follow Jesus as the king of your life and as the king and savior of the universe. And so the reason James says that this word, the good news of Jesus, is planted in you is to really drive home the point that knowing the truth, this truth about what Jesus has done, which is what saves us, not our actions or deeds, but when you know the truth, that changes how we act. Not just in what we think or believe, our knowledge, but every part of us. Our, our, our identity is in Jesus. So continuing on with verse uh, 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Once you accept the good news of Jesus and decide to follow him as your king and savior, the next step is to start living the way God wants us to live, to follow God's word, trusting that what God says is the best way to live. And James really turns things on their head, right? At the beginning of tonight, we said, Yeah, it seems so unnatural to not get angry or annoyed quickly, to listen first before speaking. That makes sense according to the world, but James says that actually it makes no sense to believe in Jesus and follow him and yet do the complete opposite, to ignore him and what he says about how we should act and behave. Now, that doesn't mean you won't stuff up and make mistakes and have setbacks. Every single Christian has those moments. We all keep sinning. We all reject God, even when we know it's wrong. But when we do stuff up, we are called to follow what the Bible says to do, what God says to do in that situation too, to running away from sin, keep trusting and depending on Jesus. Will you be like the person who goes to the mirror and forgets what they look like straight after they walk away? When you leave youth group tonight, AYR and Sunday Arvos, or church, or when you're around your family or Christian mates, you leave them, will you forget what it looks like to follow Jesus? Jesus? Or will you leave here tonight living for Jesus? Will you leave here tonight saying that you know the truth, you've accepted the truth, and then actually living it out? In the quietness of your own thoughts, in what you watch, what you say, how you say it, when you're around your Christian mates, but also when you're hanging out with your non-Christian friends. Following Jesus means that your identity is in Him. Your whole life changes. Not just what you believe, but what you think, how you behave, what you say, how you speak. Will you live for what you believe in and know to be true? Will you live with Jesus as the king of your life? 